is, by the way, why intellectuals, for example, don't understand Trump at all. I was reading Trump's book, uh, The Art of the Deal. And I just want to tell, give you a little vignette from that because it kind of shows you how a capitalist thinks. And then ask yourself, you know, does my professor really think like this? And you'll see this is the furthest thought from his mind at all. The intellectual habit of mind is very different than the entrepreneurial habit of mind. So let's look at the entrepreneurial habit of mind. So Trump crosses the, um, the border, you might say, from Queens to Manhattan. His dad was uh, a, a rental property owner in Queens. And his dad told Trump, don't go to Manhattan. That's not our type of people. We can never succeed over there. It's cutthroat. Let's stay in Queens. We collect small rents from rent-controlled apartments. That's kind of what the Trump family does. Trump ignores this advice, marches into Manhattan. He walks and he looks for hotels for sale. He's never owned a hotel, he's never run a hotel, but there is the Commodore Hotel, a very ancient historic hotel right across from Grand Central Station, but it's rat infested, it's terrible, they can't charge more than $30 a night for a room, it's all run down, it's poorly run, nobody's actually living there, in fact there are homeless people sleeping in the corridors of the Commodore Hotel. So Trump goes to see the owners of the Commodore Hotel and he says, I wanna buy this hotel. He has absolutely no money to do that. They start negotiating a price and the guys go, where's your money? And Trump goes, I have it, but I want you to sign a piece of paper telling me that you'll sell me the Commodore Hotel for let's just say $4 million. So they sign a paper saying that they will do that Trump takes that paper and then starts going to one bank after another, and he goes, I'm buying the Commodore Hotel. They've agreed to sell it to me for $4 million. I need $4 million. Where's your collateral? There it is, the Commodore Hotel. So Trump doesn't own the hotel. He doesn't have any money, but he's putting this whole thing together in his head based on the idea that he will have it, right? And so he gets the money to buy the hotel, and then he goes up to the hotel and he says, I want to renovate the hotel, I want mirrors on the front, on all sides. This seems like an expression of Trump ego, and to some degree it is. But people go, why do you want mirrors? No hotel has mirrors on the front. Trump goes, we're living in New York City. If you put mirrors on the front of my hotel, you can see Grand Central Station, you can see the Chrysler Building, you can see these grand monuments of New York reflected in the hotel. And Trump goes, look around the hotel. Look at all these people in three-piece suits walking into Grand Central Station. All these people have money, but they're not staying in the Commodore because the Commodore sucks. But if the Commodore is renovated and looks good, these people can stay in it. And then Trump goes and makes a deal with Hyatt to run the hotel. And people say, why do you want to split your profits with Hyatt? Trump goes, because I have no idea how to run a hotel. They're actually gonna reimburse me for a lot of the investment costs and they're gonna run the hotel and we're gonna split 50-50. Now if you ask me, that's genius. None of my professors of romance languages at Dartmouth could even begin to figure that one out. They don't even think like that. Even the conservative champions of capitalism don't think like that. That's why most of them work at libertarian think tanks because they're in defense of entrepreneurship, but they're not actually entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurial mindset is very different. It's always thinking about where value is and how to create value. It's a different way of thinking. Trump has it. 